Right, so last night the Tories' Data Protection and Digital Information Bill passed its third reading and has now been passed on to the House of Lords. But not before the nasty party snuck in a last-minute extra bit of nastiness to force all banks to monitor the accounts of benefit claimants looking for suspected fraud. I can only assume it's too much to ask that they do this for offshore accounts of the rich in the Cayman Islands or the British Virgin Islands, of course, but no. They're going to make the banks do broad checks on benefit claims instead in a bid to save, apparently, half a billion quid over five years. Here's a thought. How about you do this to Michelle Moan's bank account instead or ask Dido Harding where that £37 billion in test and trace cash went? This is yet another culture war, yet more persecution for people already struggling in their daily lives with their help. Now, not knowing if Big Brother is rifling through their finances too. Right, so... As if the disabled, the long-term sick, the out of work don't have enough on their plates right now, as the Tories look set to find them fit for work, come what may, or die in the process, somehow they're managing to become even crueler in their plans outlined in the autumn statement, because now they'll be spying on your bank accounts too. Worse, there was no objection to it. Normally when you see one of these votes happening in Parliament, the Speaker or Deputy Speaker asks for the eyes to the right and the nose to the left, and when the nose are loud enough, they call division! And MPs trundle off to vote, don't they? Well, there was no division regarding this extra clause. The eyes had it. The eyes had it. There was a later division vote on the schedule for bank spying, not the clause the Tories snuck in, and even then just 52 MPs voted against it. Just seven of those were Labour. Most of them were SNP. Starmer, in customary style, sat on his hands over this, sat on the fence, arse full of splinters, as per usual. The allegation, the justification for this rule, is that the number of benefit claimants has gone up since the pandemic. So we're talking all those people left with long COVID or associated other health issues because of government incompetence, let's face it, as the obvious target of this move, combined with Hunt's horrible move to toughen up sanctions even further to the point of stripping people of their right to access free healthcare, legal aid and more. They allege that with more claimants come more fraud, completely ignoring the fact as ever that benefit fraud is basically negligible, whilst tax fraud is many, many, many times greater. Those people might be Tory donors, though, or potentially Labour ones these days, since they basically nodded this through by providing no opposition to it. Now, the claims made by the government on this are very simple. Oh, we're definitely just looking for the fraudsters, you understand. We're looking for those with more than £16,000 in savings, which would mean people are no longer entitled to certain means-tested benefits, or we're looking for those who spend too long overseas and lose their entitlement. That would certainly justify the government including the disability benefit personal independence payment in their plans, because that benefit is not means-tested. It is absolutely irrelevant what your income is. If you claim that, it is all about how much support you need in your daily life to get up and get on because of disability or long-term ill health. But you lose entitlement to it if you spend more than 104 weeks out of the last 156 out of the country. And you also lose entitlement, temporarily at least, if you're in hospital for a prolonged period, more than a month, I believe it is. Now, it strikes me that this is going to apply to very few claimants all in all a fractional of PIP claimants, because let's face it, most people who are on benefits in this regard, they're not well off enough to go swanning off abroad for long periods of time, and they certainly don't have more than £16,000 rattling around in their bank accounts. A few will. So why make this a focus, really? There has to be another reason. There's always another reason when it comes to the Tories. You've always got to dig down to find out what they're really up to, what they're really after. The Tories know, as they have for the last 13 years, that you get the benefit bill down by kicking genuine claimants off their claims. That's why the process for claiming PIP, PIP, or Employment and Support Allowance, ESA, or Universal Credit, particularly the disability elements, so hard. And indeed, why they insist on reviewing these people when, for a lot of them, they will never get better. They have lifelong disabilities and illnesses. So what do you reckon is the real reason behind this then, Damo? I hear you ask. Well, I'm so glad you asked, because Jeremy Hunt's plans to force everyone to look for some form of work, even working from home if you're long-term sick or disabled, has one exemption, and that is if the ill or disabled claimant of universal credit or the equivalent legacy benefit is also in receipt of PIP. Therefore, really, this is about finding people on PIP who they can try and kick off PIP, who they can then try and force into work. They can't do it based on earnings, PIP is not means tested, though there was talk not long ago of reviewing that. That isn't on the table at this moment in time, though. Maybe in a future Tory manifesto, I wouldn't rule it out. But with PIP being the gateway benefit, I can see those claimants being eyeballed for definite. 
If you want on PIP, expect to be coerced into work. So the government might well expect more claims for PIP to go in. That'll be fun, won't it? The DWP is a sta has a massive staffing crisis right now. It's currently operating almost a year behind with PIP claims and renewals yet again. So even if people try to claim it with this banking spy game due to begin apparently before the end of the year, they'll be fighting not only to claim PIP because that in and of itself is a swine, but battling against delays in doing so too as they face losing other entitlements because they simply are not fit for work. It's a royal mess in the making, but the Tories, they don't really care. This is vote fodder for the right wing, isn't it? General election coming up not too long, weren't there? How will the banks implement this so fast as well? All the work, all the emphasis of this is being put on them to do this, isn't it? This job is being legislated upon them as things stand. How quickly can they do this? Will they need to recruit more staff to do so? Is it in their interest to do so? Are they going to argue the toss with the government instead? Especially with the DWP wanting them to check accounts monthly too. This is blatantly an invasion of privacy. When the same isn't being done to tackle tax fraud, which is a much greater issue, they are as ever targeting the wrong place for sofa change in effect rather than recouping meaningful large sums of money. Apparently it will involve lots of trained specialists to review bank accounts as well, but when that comes from a Tory, and considering we're talking about benefits here, I'm reminded of all those not at all well-trained benefit assessors out there who screw up on a regular basis and mess up people's lives. And I ask myself, how likely is it these people can not only be trained, but be put in place and begin the work within weeks and keep up with it? We're nearly in December. Not only is this an invasion of privacy, though, but it is a declaration by the Tories and Labour for not standing up for them that disabled people and the long-term sick are to be automatically treated as criminals, along with their carers, of course, who gave up work to look after them and for whom Jeremy Hunt has announced nothing in the way of support as his plans for their charges start getting off the ground. What happened to innocent unless proven guilty? Now everyone who happens to be long-term sick or disabled is guilty unless found innocent. With a benefit system still two-tiered as it is right now, the government still have not got universal credit universally rolled out, of course, bearing in mind they said it would all be done getting on for seven years ago now. That regularly still gets screwed up for people who can least afford it. For a demographic of whom hundreds of thousands of people have died due to how the Tories have for years mishandled the matter of the incomes and finances of the long-term sick and disabled. How anyone can have any faith in this being administered properly and so quickly is beyond me. It's for the birds. That the opposition mostly sat on their hands as it progressed through the Commons and now on to the Lords. It's not law yet. The Lords could still, uh, you know, have a fiddle, have a tinker, have a say. Should serve as a reminder that Starmer's lot are absolutely no different. And with his Chancellor Rachel Rees being most famous for saying, we'll be tougher on benefits than the Tories, there's little hope that things will change with them in charge instead. Guilty unless proven innocent. Invasions of privacy. Banks made to do a job that isn't really their business to do. Benefits will now have an extra layer of being screwed up by the Tories. It's just pitting deserving poor against undeserving poor. And people shouldn't be taken in by it and should be disgusted by those introducing it. We've seen enough damage and fallout under the benefit system by now that we should all be wise to this by now. Planning it as well as those sitting on the fence and watching it happen. Refusing to stand up for those with additional needs as Labour are. The Tories and Labour truly are two cheeks of the same arse here. So if this disgusts you as much as it does me, don't vote for either of them. Do disabled people and long-term sick people a big favour. Don't vote for either of them. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did. More content out daily. Please do have your say on this story in the comments below and be part of the conversation. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where I went into the, into the details of Hunt's latest plans further uh, earlier this month when he brought out his autumn statement, adding a little bit more context to the cruelty being exposed that he's seeking to inflict. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next bid. Cheers, folks.